Hello, Namaskar and a very good afternoon to all the viewers watching NCRT's live interactive session. This is Simran Singh and you have all connected with us through eVidya channel number 10. And also viewers, if you have any of the queries in our live segments, you all know the different mediums through which you can reach out to us. One of them is our contact number. It is flashing on your screens. So, if there is any question that you have in your mind, then you can call us on this number. You can query us with our question. Our contact number is 8800440559. And for 10th standard ke students, we will be able to do this science. Ka ka. So, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in. And let me uh, introduce the topic to all our viewers. The topic that we are going to discuss today, it is heredity. So, have you learnt about it? And I guess uh, that some areas of heredity you have already learnt and adapted the different concepts in your childhood and in your previous classes as well. So, whatever you know as of now about heredity, please uh, write to us at dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in and we will try to resolve all your queries in the program itself. Also, viewers, before introducing you to the expert for the program, here is an important piece of information for all of you regarding G20 presidency. You all know that we are proud of the fact that India assumed the G20 presidency and is convening the G20 leadership, uh, leadership summit for the first time in the country in this year, that's 2023. The nation is deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism. India's G20 presidency is a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play a very important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of everyone and in doing so manifesting the true spirit of Vasudhev Kutumbakam. Should I say the world is one family? And also let me introduce you to the expert for the program we have with us, Ms. Smriti Yadavji. Namaskar ma'am. We welcome you in the conversation. Uh, Ma'am is TGT Science, currently serving at Army Public School from Suratgarh, Rajasthan. So, Ma'am, as we are discussing about heredity, let's get to understand the meaning of this particular term for all our viewers, for the students of class 10th. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, we are going to discuss class 10th Science chapter, that is heredity. Now, before going to the topic, we will first learn that what exactly heredity means. In your previous classes, maybe you must have heard your heredity ka word in your previous junior classes. Mein bhi suna hi hoga. Now, let's see what exactly heredity is. See, heredity, if I tell you in a simple language, mein batau, so heredity is when transmission of characters from your parents to offspring takes place. You have seen that there are few characters when you compare yourself with your parents. So, you will see that there are some characters that are the same with your mom and some characters that are the same with your father and your father. And then there are a lot of characters which are different words. Now, this transmission of character is known as heredity. Now, the second word as you can see in this slide is variation. Now, I have told you that few characters are the same and few characters are different. Different. Now, where does this difference come from? This difference comes when different characters are transferred from your parents to the offspring and that is known as variation. Now, what is heredity? Heredity is transmission of characters from parents to offspring and when there is a change or when there is a difference in these characters, that is known as variation. And now, when we study both of them, that is heredity and variation, that is known as Genetics, that is the study of heredity and variation is known as genetics. Look here, variations we all have seen. We are different from our parents. Our parents are different from our grandparents. If you compare a dog, a cat, a buffalo, yeah, an elephant, all of them are different from each other. Even if I talk about a fruit, so for example, mango. Mango, if I talk about a variety of mango, variety. Variety kya hai? That mangoes dif are different in variety. Now, how are they different? Because they have variation. That is known as variation. Now, let's dive a little more into how variation happens. There are two types of variation. Now, what are these two types of variation? First is somatic variation. And the second one is thematic variation. 
Now, what is somatic variation? Now, you all must have learned that there are two types of cells in, in an organism. That is somatic cells and then we have your uh, reproductive cells. Now, what are uh, somatic cells and reproductive cells? See, now somatic cells are those cells, uh, are those cells which are, uh, somatic cells are those cells which are not re related to your sexual reproduction. And your gametic cells are those cells, in another word, they are also known as germ cells. They are related to your uh, reproductive part. Now, when there is a variation in somatic cells, that is known as somatic variation. Now, somatic variations are not inherited and they are not transmitted to the next generation. That is why they are also known as acquired traits. Because the, we acquire these traits for some time. They are not transmitted from one generation to another generation. That is, they are not heredity. They are not transmitted from your parents to the offspring. Now, what is gametic variation? Gametic variation occurs in your germ cells. Or the other word to the germ cell is your reproductive cells, which are involved in reproduction. So, if there is a change in your reproductive cell, there is a change in the germ cell, then those changes will be inherited in your next generation. That is heredity. That is your characters will be transmitted from parents to the offspring. So, that is why they are known as inherited traits. Ma yes, uh, that is. also like to know uh, what are the different factors that affect the somatic and the gametic variations? Yes, ma'am. See, somatic variation basically happens when there is a change in the environment. If there is a change in the light, if there is change in the temperature, if there is change in the uh, amount of food that is available, uh, if there is a change in their habitat, if these changes happen, then somatic variations are there. And for gametic variation, if there is mutation or recombination, say, if I tell you the, uh, what happens in mutation, See, we all have heard about chromosomes. When there is a change in the chromosome or there is a recombination in the chromosome, these factors affect your gametic variations. So, what is exactly somatic and gametic variation? Somatic variations are those changes which are not transmitted from your parents to the next generation and they happen in your somatic cells. That is why they are known as acquired traits because we have acquired them. We have not inherited them. And then we have gametic variation. What is gametic variation? Gametic variation is when there is a change in your reproductive cell or in your germ cells. And they are transmitted to your next generation. Okay, so that is why they are known as inherited traits. There are some traits that will transfer to next generation, which your parents or your offspring will show. That is known as inherited traits or thematic variation. Now moving on to the next part that is why variation is important. See, if variation is happening, importance hoga, there will be some importance to variation. What is the importance of variation? First, that it is the basis of heredity. Now in the first slide itself, I told you that what is heredity? Transfer of characters from parents to the offspring. So, if same same characters transfer, honge, so no one will know whether the characters are being transferred, whether the characters are not being transferred. So, if there is a variation, we will get to know that yes, the characters are inherited by the offspring. And also, second point, that it is the basis of evolution. Now, what do you mean by evolution? Evolution is gradual changes which occur in the organism due to uh, the environmental or outside factor along with the internal factor. Evolution happens gradually. So, if evolution means gradual changes. Now, changes itself tell that some kind of variation is going to take place. So, that is why variation is important for evolution. And ma'am, when we are discussing at length about this concept of heredity, I believe that uh, it just not takes place in human beings but also each and every living species. Uh, that is present around us. Is that so? Yes, ma'am. See, what happens is that variation happens because of the environmental factors also and it also happens because of the internal factors also. We will discuss this later in the coming slide that variations, two types, somatic variation and thematic variation. 
so they both so they depend variation depends on your environmental factor also and on your internal factors also and i believe no. the very examples of variations uh, can be taken from the recent surroundings and the two years of covid 19 that we have faced yes ma'am very yes very good example is that our in that see our immunity is building up against covid we have taken vaccine so the vaccination part is helping us evolve against the covid 19 uh, virus very good example of variation next the third most important uh, point here is that it increases the chances of survival of the organism according to the changing environment so what do you mean by this uh, i think you all must have heard about uh, that survival of the fittest told by darwin so what is the survival of the fittest see if we are not adapting the variation are uh, we are not changing then we are not going to survive in, in a particular environment अगर मैं आपको एक छोटा सा एग्जाम्पल दू जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल एक प्लांट है इट इज ग्रोइंग इन पर्टिकुलर इन्वायरमेंट बट ड्यूटिंग वेरिएशन सो दर्वाइवल ऑफ द प्लांट विल बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट एंड एंड सिमिलर गोज टू दी अदर ऑर्गेनिजम ऑल्सो एनिमल्स एंड एज वेल एज ह्यूमन बींग्स इफ वी आर नॉट अडेप्टिंग वेरिएशन इफ वेरिएशन इज नॉट है सो सर्वाइवल ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिजम विल बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट सो वॉट आर दी इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ वेरिएशन फर्स्ट इज दैट इट इज द बेसिस ऑफ हेरिडिटी एंड सेकेंड दैट इट इज द बेसिस ऑफ एवोल्यूशन and third point which is important that is it increases the chance of the survival of organism according to the changing environment if which if variation is happening and if it is in the favor of the organism the organism will be able to cope up better in the environment now what are the causes of variation we have discussed variation we have discussed is why do we need variation up there are some causes also that why exactly is variation happening now the most common causes of variation is mutation now what is mutation now what happen mutation is a genetic ek uh, genetic difference in your chromosomes now you have already heard what chromosome you have already learned what chromosome is in your previous classes it is present in your dna Yeah, which helps in your uh, transmission, which helps in your heredity. That is transmission of characters from your parents to the offspring. Now, sometimes what happens due to some genetic reason, mutation occurs. That is some changes in your chromosome. Now, if chromosome um is changed, there is a change in the chromosome. So, some kind of variation will occur in the organism. So, that is one cause of. variation and the other cause is recombination so what is recombination as the word suggests combining two things now if chromosomes as we all know that they they combine together to form a new chromosome yes so if there is if two chromosomes are combining and forming a new chromosome that is known as recombination so some kind of variation will be there because it will take some part from uh, the first chromosome and something from the second chromosome and a new character might be formed so that is also a cause of variation and the third part is that is a random mating now for example if there is a palmer okay uske paas do plants hain one plant is that it survival rate is very high it can survive if water is less if heat is more then also it can survive it can survive diseases also and the other plant is there jiska a fruit बहुत जल्दी ग्रो करते हैं यस उसका यील्डिंग बहुत अच्छी है तो व्हाट विल द फार्मर डू टू गेट द बेस्ट ऑफ बोथ ऑफ देम ही विल डू अ रैंडम मेटिंग ही विल मेट बोथ द प्लांट्स इवन दो दे आर नॉट ऑट मेट इवन दो दे आर नॉट नेचुरली मेटिंग ही विल डू इट आर्टिफिशियली ही विल डू रैंडम मेटिंग एंड देन द प्लांट विच इज फॉर्म ड्यू टू द रैंडम मेटिंग विल हैव बोथ द बेस्ट कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ दी parent plant that is it will be surviving in in the uh, harsh condition and it will be yielding more fruit to the farmer these are the three causes of variation that is mutation recombination and random mating as you can see in the slide that recombination of crossing over is one of the important reasons of variation as it's also known as mutation 
Now, exchange of chromosome segment at the time of gamete formation. Now, when there is an exchange of chromosome, as I told you, for mutation during the formation of gamete, right, then also mutation can occur. And when there is a crossing over of chromosome, then recombining or recombining of the chromosome, then also your variation can occur. And the third important uh, cause due to which variation can occur, it is random mating. Now, before moving on to the next slide, we have all studied about variation, heredity. We have all studied about this. Now, I am telling you this. Your teacher is telling you this. That is why you are able to know this. My teacher has told me. So, that is why I know about heredity and variation. But there must be some person, one first person who must have got curious about all this and must have studied this so that we we are here studying about it and we can know more about it. Now, who was this person? He is also known as the father of genetics. He is Sir Gregor John Mendel. He, what he did was, I will tell you a small story. One day he was sitting in his garden and he was observing his garden. So he saw that his garden has n number of pea plants. That is Pisum sativum. It is the scientific name of garden pea. So he noticed that the garden pea, he, a lot of plants are quite similar to one another. Few of them are different to one another. So he got really curious that why is it that some plants are the same, some plants have a lot of variation, some plants are the same as the same. So he thought that why not perform an experiment and get to know more about it. So what he did was, he took seven contrasting pairs, seven pairs of contrasting characters, as you can see on the screen, what are these seven contrasting characters? Why did he choose was pea plant? Because it has uh, different seven contrasting characters, different characters which are very visible to us. Now what happens before discussing these seven characters, you can see that dominant trait and recessive trait is written here. Now, what is a dominant trait? Now, dominant trait is something, see, as we all know, dominant is someone who ke ubhar ke bahar aata hai. You know? And recessive is someone who is in the inferior, who lies, is low. So, same happens here. Dominant traits are those traits which are, which show you, which are shown immediately or aise traits jo ki dominant hai, jo ki recessive trait ko piche chhod ke, so, upar aate hain, that are known as dominant. Now, what are these dominant and recessive traits? Let look. Let's have a look at them one by one. The first is flower color. Now, what is dominant flower color in your garden pea? It is purple. And what is recessive? That is white. And what is next character is plant height. Now, what is the dominant trait in pea plant? It is tall. And what is recessive? It is short. Next, we have seed color. Now, seed color is also of two. Dominant one is yellow and your recessive one is green. Now, next we have seed shape. Now, the dominant is a round shape of the seed and your recessive is a wrinkled shape of this seed. Now, next is pod color. Now, what is pod? Pod is, uh, uh, pod is the structure inside which your pea, peas are present. Okay. So, now the dominant trait in pod color is green and recessive is yellow. It is different from the seed color. Now, dominant trait when we are looking for pod shape is inflated. It is full. And when recessive trait, if you look at the pod shape, it is constricted. That it is flattened. And position of the flower, either the flower can be axial or the flower can be terminal. Now, what is dominant? Dominant one is axial and the recessive one is now, you must be wondering that why uh, Sir Mendel only chose garden pea plant, he could have chosen any other plant. Yes. So, now let's look at why, reasons that why is, uh, Sir Mendel has chosen garden pea for his experiment. There are four main reasons. First one is short life cycle. See, garden pea plant is a plant and which spurts in a very short span of time. It grows into a seed. Uh, it grows from a seedling to a plant in a very short duration. So that is why he chose it because he can study more plants once at a time. Second is large number of seed produced. As we all know uh, that a number of uh, peas are produced in from, a, from one plant. So he could have studied more number of plants. He would get a lot of seeds so that he can plant more 
or pea plants uh, for his study for uh, for his further studies next and third important point is self pollination now what do you mean by self pollination you all must have read about two types of pollination self pollination and cross pollination now why self pollination because pea plant and in the pea plant flower male and female ill reproductive but both are present there is no need in no need for any external pollination agent to uh, to carry out the reproduction part the, which happens in your cross pollination that is why he chose was pea plant because it can self pollinate there is no need for external agent to do pollination which will help in reproduction of the plant and fourth is that is it has several contrasting characters that can be found we have already seen in the previous slide that there are seven contrasting characters which which uh, sir mendel could study so that is why he chose garden pea plant for his experiment four important character four important reasons that is short life cycle large number of seed produced self pollination and several contrasting characters that can be found in the pea plant that is why he chose garden pea for his experiment and ma'am as you just uh, mentioned about self pollination being one of the important areas why garden pea plant was used as you mentioned that there are two kinds of pollination so we would also like to know the some of the basic differences along with examples of cross pollination as well where cross pollination occurs plants yes. uh ma'am one example is papaya plant where cross pollination occurs both may uh, the male flower is present on another flower uh, another plant and the female flower is present on the other now moving on further while mendel some mendel was studying he formulated three very important laws as after his experiment now we'll study about all the three laws one by one now the first law is a law of dominance as we have already seen in the previous slide dominant characters and recessive characters now what is law of dominance see i'll tell you with a small example as you can see in your screen that we have chosen one character that is tall plant and short plant that is the height of the plant we have chosen okay so now as you can see here i've not drawn short plant and tall plant what i have done i have chosen alphabet for that now why i have chosen alphabet because it is easier every time you cannot or uh, draw and do the uh, do the experiment you have you can use alphabets also okay now what are these alphabets known as these alphabets are known as alleles okay now what are alleles alleles are the characters say for example if i have a tall plant now what are the alleles for tall plant alleles for tall plant is capital t capital t and what are the alleles for short plant small t small t okay now the, these are known as alleles now here you can see what is happening that i have crossed a tall plant with a short pea plant now what you will do is you have to do first the tall capital t is crossed over with the small t what you will get a capital t and small t next the first capital t is then crossed with the second small t again you will get a capital t and a small t now the second capital t is crossed with your small t again you will first small t and you will get what you will get a capital t and a small t now again when you cross your second and capital t with your second small t you will again get a capital t and small t now, as you can see you will get all the plants here are tall in their height there is no short plant what happened here what exactly happened see i already told you that tall plant that the tall height of the plant is dominant and short height of the plant is is a recessive since capital t is present so that is why all the plants are dominant here now before you uh, get confused i like to clear your confusion that how do i know whether a uh, capital t and small t will produce a tall plant and and uh, small t and small t will produce a, a small plant see there are two uh, types that is known as phenotype and genotype what is phenotype and what is genotype see phenotype are those characters which are visible which are visible to your eyes okay they are visible from the upper surface that is upcup if the plant is tall you will tell acha this is tall plant if the plant is short you will tell acha this is a short plant 
आप ये नहीं बता सकते वेदर द टोल प्लांट इज बोथ टी टी और वेदर द टोल प्लांट इज कैपिटल टी और स्मॉल टी ओके सो हाउ विल यू टेल इल वेदर द प्लांट द टोल प्लांट इज कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी और वेदर द स्मॉल प्लांट इज कैपिटल टी एंड स्मॉल टी फॉर दिस यू हैव टू नो द जीनो टाइप ऑफ द Yes. Now, what is genotype? When you go to the gene part of the uh, or uh, plant, that is, see here, capital T and small t. Now, capital T is dominant and small t is recessive. So, which part will be uh, appear? Which character will appear? The character which is dominant that will be that will appear. Now, you must be also seeing that in the parent, both the T's were capital for tall plant and both the T's were small for the short plant but when you uh, combine them the offspring which are formed they have sm uh, capital t and small t now here is another um, uh, important term that is known as homozygous and heterozygous now what is homozygous homozygous as the name suggests something which is same yes so homozygous is when in the tall plant parent plant as you can see both capital t and capital t is present that is known as homozygous and when you will see e in the offspring where capital t and small t is present that is known as heterozygous heterozygous as we all know that it is a different something which is different yes so something which is not same so t capital t and small t are not same that is why they are known as heterozygous and capital t capital t since they are same they are known as homozygous homozygous alleles and heterozygous alleles yes now if i come back to the definition of law of dominance it is if the two alleles at a locus differ yes then one see here as you can see that the two alleles here are different in the offspring capital t and small t the dominant allele determines the organism appearance now who is going to determine the appearance of the organism the dominant allele will determine the appearance of the organism and in her in case with what is dominant the capital t is dominant that is tall plant is dominant uh, the recess you allele. are discussing certain important areas with us uh, but we are not left with much time in the conversation so i'll have to request you to conclude your words yes ma'am allele is a recessive allele now you must and now you will see then a noticeable effect of the organisms appearance okay so which character will be shown the one which is dom which is dominant allele it will be it will appear in the organism and the recessive allele will not be noticeable but is it see if i tell you i told you about phenotype and genotype yes if i know about the phenotype of an organism can i identify its genotype if i give you two plants and i tell you that both of the two plants by just seeing the plant you will tell yes ma'am both the plants are tall but if i tell you now can you tell me the genotype of the plant so that is little difficult only with if you know the phenotype you also have to know the genotype of the plant with genotype if you can tell the phenotype of the plant as you can see here if i know the genotype that is capital t small t then i can say yes the plant will be tall because capital t is dominant so this was your first law that is law of dominance second law is law of segregation this law is very easy as the name suggests segregation or something which is segregated see when an organism makes gamete each gamete receives just one gene copy which is selected randomly now as you can see in the image which i have provided here i have taken the color of the seed that is yellow seed green seed the parental generation is Now, can you tell me whether it is homozygous or heterozygous? It is homozygous. Yes, because both the alleles are same. Now, what happens in law of segregation? The law of segregation says that when the gametes are formed on from the parental generation, the gametes are distributed, and each gamete will receive only one gene. That is, that you can see here that when Y Y capital Y and capital Y are separated. each has received one only that is capital y capital y and the other one is small y and small y and then when you cross it over you will get your f1 generation now coming to the third law that is law of independent assortment now what is independent assortment as the name suggest 
that the law of independent assortment state that allele of different gene are inherited independently within the organism that reproduce sexually. Now, what happens is if I tell you with an example, see, if I have a dominant allele, it is not necessary that if it is not necessary that the other allele which will come and combine with it, it will be dominant. It will be, it is independent. It either can be dominant or it either can be your recessive. Uh, Same, yes, ma'am. I am sure that our viewers might be clear of this concept and ma'am, due to paucity of time, we might not be able to continue ahead for this particular session. Uh, thank you so much for connecting with us. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. It was uh, wonderful having this particular chapter of heredity for uh, today's conversation with us. And whatever we have discussed so far, I am pretty sure that our viewers will take a note of the important segments mentioned. Thank you to all the viewers for connecting with us in this particular live interactive session. Do not go anywhere next up. We have our session of Hindi for all our class 10 students. The topic that we are going to discuss, yani hamara vishya rahega sanskriti, bhadant anand kausalyanan. और दर्शकों इससे पहले कि सत्र को यहीं विराम दें एक विशेष जानकारी एनसीईआरटी की विभिन्न पाठ्यपुस्तकों से जुड़ी हुई है आपकी स्क्रीन पर ये जानकारी है कि एनसीईआरटी के विभिन्न पाठ्यपुस्तकें इस सत्र यानी शैक्षणिक सत्र 2023 से 2024 के लिए पूरे देश में उपलब्ध हैं आप इन्हें खरीद सकते हैं एन के अलग अलग सेल्स काउंटर से इसके अलावा आप ऑनलाइन ऑर्डर भी प्लेस कर सकते हैं हमारी वेबसाइट का लिंक आपकी स्क्रीन पर फ्लैश हो रहा है एंड ऑल्सो इफ यू वुड लाइक टू डाउनलोड दिस पर्टिकुलर टेक्स्ट बुक्स इन द पीडीएफ और द सॉफ्ट कॉपी वर्जन्स देन दे आर डिफरेंट मीडियम्स आल्सो फ्लैशिंग ऑन योर स्क्रीन्स इन ऑर्डर टू नो मोर अबाउट ऑथराइज वेंडर्स और द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ दीज टेक्सट बुक्स फील फ्री टू एक्सप्लोर द वेबसाइट ऑफ एन सी आर टी दैट इज डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट एन सी आर टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन वंस अगेन थैंक यू सो मच स्मृति मैम फॉर कनेक्टिंग विद इन द कॉन्वर्सेशन and shedding light on this chapter that is heredity thank you to all the viewers stay connected we'll be right back within few minutes namaskar